Hey ladies, welcome to Coffee with Kelly week 12. Uh, thank you for joining me today. My cup today says blessed beyond me measure. So uh, I don't know if it was last year or the year before our ladies retreat and I love this theme and this cup and I feel blessed beyond measure today. So I hope you do too. And yes, the mask is not there accidentally. It is one of my props. So my topic this morning is uh, called Corona Kindness. And it's a word I learned today and um, I'm excited to talk about kindness. So let's pray. Father God, we come before you. Uh, we worship your holy name uh, this morning or this afternoon. God, you are so worthy to be praised. And when I think about kindness, Lord, we think about you and your loving kindness towards us, Lord, and we are so grateful and so thankful for it. And Father, I pray that as we look at the topic of kindness, Lord, that you would teach us to be kind uh, like you. So give us ears to hear right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So anyways, just to get a little perspective, I don't know when you're watching this, but because uh, I am filming this on June 7th. So I wanted you to know that in case you're watching it in a month from now and kind of like uh, putting it a little bit in context of what we're talking about. I think it's like week 12 or something of the shelter in place. I'm not really sure. Uh, the stay home orders and stuff, but things are beginning to open up. We can have 100 people at church and things are looking up. And um, so anyways, that's kind of where we are at in history. And today uh, we've had three during this uh, pandemic, we've had three food drops at our local food pantry in Murrieta. And uh, it's where the whole body, we tell the body, come on this date from 9 to 11. They drive through, they drop off food, we take it out of their cars and we're helping up. Uh, the need for food has grown in all the local food pantries, so it's our way of helping Murrieta. So it's been great. So the food pantry is in Murrieta and uh, right next to it is a, a bookstore that has been closed most of the time and has just recently opened up as well. So I was walking around to the back today of the food bank and uh, as I rounded the corner, the bookstore had a, a sign in their window that they wanted people to continue to wear a mask when they came in, but the sign, they called it Corona Kindness and then went on to talk about uh, why they wanted you to wear a mask. And I really, really liked that word, Corona Kindness. I think it explains a lot of what we're doing and how we feel at Calvary and just personally. And um, we had just been talking outside at the food bank to all of us who were there to receive the food, whether we still had to wear masks or not. But the food bank uh, uh, director, we, they have very strict uh, social distancing and um, wearing masks and stuff like that. So we decided, yes, to honor their rules. Obviously, we need to wear masks as well as some people, when they drive through the lines, are completely over it, no masks, I don't care, while other people are still barely putting their windows down as you're trying to talk to them. And so you have still a variety of different people, different situations, and you know, all that is fine. And so when I saw that sign, I thought, what a great phrase, Corona Kindness to describe, you know, why some of us are still wearing masks when at like different places, you don't have to. Now this devotion is not about Corona or masks or to judge you if you do or don't wear a mask. So let me tell you that up front. It is just my introduction. Um, but later that day I went home, I was tired and I, I went in and doing stuff in my house and I saw my postman drive up and there was a package too big to put in my mailbox uh, nothing exciting, something for my dog. And anyways, he was coming in, so I went out through the garage to uh, to greet him so he didn't have to walk all the way up to get the package. Well, I didn't have my mask on because I was walking out, and, and he had a mask on, and I immediately said, oh, I'm so sorry, I don't have my mask. And he's like, no, no, it's okay, very nice, man. And I just making conversation. I'm like, do you have to wear the mask? Are they making you wear the mask all the time? And he said, he thought about it, and he said, no. He said, I just do it because I want everybody to feel comfortable. And I said, oh, I just learned a word that describes that today, Corona kindness. And he stopped and he looked at me and he's like, I've never heard that, Corona kindness. Yes, that's why I wear a mask. 
And um, recently, too, I was in my grocery store that still has a sign that you must wear masks. They won't stop you or anything anymore. They have that sign if all their employees have to wear masks. But I still wear one because many people inside the store are wearing one. And I was going through the checkers line, a checker that I've known for a really long time. And, <clears throat> again, just making conversation. And they have to wear masks like their whole eight-hour shifts or whatever. And so I just said, gosh, you... You must be really excited to hopefully soon be able to remove that mask. And she said, no, I think I'll be wearing it for a little bit longer than everyone else. And I said, oh, really? And she said, yeah, I'm a, a kidney transplant survivor. And so I need to be protected. And I thought, hmm, again, corona kindness. So I was glad I had my mask on to make her feel comfortable. So... This devotion, again, is not really about how corona kind that you are. Uh, it's simply about kindness. That word, kindness. The Bible is full of words and exhortations about kindness. Both the kindness of God and how we are called to be kind to others. Uh, you know, it's funny because it uh, in Scripture it doesn't differentiate between being kind or showing kindness during COVID times or non-COVID times. It doesn't differentiate between showing kindness to those you love or those you don't love. It doesn't differentiate between when you're supposed to show kindness and when you don't have to or who the kindness should be shown to. Uh, too. If you agree with them or you don't agree with them. If you are a different political party than they are. If you are a different religion than they are. If you are a different race, a different color than they are. It's not uh, you be kind this time. It's you're always to be kind. Uh, you know, kindness is defined in the dictionary as this. Having or showing a friendly, generous, and considerate nature. Now, in the Old Testament and Scripture, kindness is also translated mercy and loving kindness. And this is a short uh, devotion, and so I'm not really going to go into that a lot. We're going to look at kindness in the general way than you, that you and I see kindness. But some synonyms for kindness are tender-hearted, warm, caring, considerate, helpful, thoughtful, unselfish, selfless, compassionate, understanding, friendly, showing favor or affection. That, that's that's a lot of words summed up in a four-letter word. Wait, is that four-letter? K-I-N-D. Yes, in a four-letter word called kind. Um, I looked up for some odd reason how to define a kind person. And it said, one who has the interest of the affected person in mind while taking an action or making an opinion. Again, thinking about someone else. It also, in that article, mentioned the advantage of the advantages of being a kind person and listed many, but one I thought was interesting, and it said, living a life with no regrets, like uh, being on your deathbed and not being ridden with guilt because you lived a life of kindness. And I thought that was actually pretty beautiful. You know, we know that we want to be like Christ. We want to walk as he walked, we want to walk in his footsteps. We want to be a correct reflection of him to this world. We want to glorify God in how we live, how we respond to life circumstances, on how we treat others. So we talk about that every single time, I think, during Coffee with Kelly, how we are to be his light on this world and reflect him. And we want to be transformed into the image of Christ. And so we look at the character of God. If we are called called to mimic or to model him, um, we look at his character and see what it's like. You know, and all through scripture, we see the kindness of God. He said, and Nehemiah calls it the abundance, the abundant kindness. David calls it his marvelous kindness. Another place in Psalms, he calls it merciful kindness. Um, we just see it on almost every page of scripture. Paul then in the New Testament in Ephesians 4.32 tells us to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as Christ, God in Christ forgave you. Very many exhortations in scripture about being kind to each other. I really love the example in the Proverbs 31 woman about kindness. You know that woman that we have a love-hate relationship with. Um, and you can read about her in Proverbs 31, 
10 through 31. Uh, she seems like the perfect wife, you know. She's not a real person. She's somebody that we all pray and aspire to be. Um, but we look at the characteristics of her of her in her heart. She's kind to her family. She's kind to her husband, which isn't always um, easy to do. She is also kind to her maidservants and those um, other employees that she has in her home. She, co uh, she shows kindness to what I would call her community. In verses 20, it says she extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hand to the needy. So she is kind to her community. She uses kind words. It says she opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. Uh, she shows love in her home. She shows love in her community. She shows love in how she answers people and how she talks to people and how she responds and how she loves people. Kindness, it's in her heart. It flows out of her very being. Um, that's living a life of kindness. You know, I think being a kind person is different than just doing this, create this, uh, there's kind of a craze right now of doing random acts of kindness. I think that's great. Nothing wrong with doing random acts of kindness. I love when I'm a recipient of someone in front of me in Starbucks and they're in the random act of kindness day and they buy your coffee. That happened to me once. I was very excited. You know, and so there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that the world right now needs these random acts of kindness. Um, I like, uh, I like to buy Boomba brand socks. I don't know if you guys have heard of them. They're great socks, but a little bit pricey, but it's a, uh, their ministry or their, um, they support uh, homelessness. And so every sock you buy, they donate a sock to a homeless and their partnering communities. It, it's really awesome, but they always talk about when, uh, these random acts of kindness. And when you buy Boomba socks, they send you a list of like 32 for the month of random acts of kindness and I think they're great I usually give them out with the socks if I'm giving them for a gift and they're great ideas again for these random acts of kindness but it's it's those are different than being kind all the time because as believers as we are transformed by the power of the gospel gospel our life should be characterized by kindness um, Yes, that includes acts of kindness, but it's just part of who we are. We are simply kind in how we treat people. Like you look at the Proverbs 31 woman, I don't think she ran around, did active, did random acts of kindness. She was just kind. She was just kind. You know, I was thinking about kind people today as I was planning on talking about kindness. And I, th I asked myself a question, who are some of the kindest people that you know? And there's two people that came to my mind. And and if I don't mention your name, it doesn't mean that I don't think you're kind. I know so many kind people. So many of you guys are, are so kind, it's, belong, it's beyond belief. But two people immediately came to my mind when I thought about who are the kindest people I know. One is a friend of mine named Rose. Um, she's the epitome, epitome of kind in how she talks to you in how she talks about others, in how she responds uh, to difficulties in her life and tragedies, in how she views her world. Um, sometimes I think it's impossible to be as kind as Rose, but it's a work of God in her heart. She is such a kind person, it blows me away. And then the other person I immediately thought of is one of our missionaries, and his name is Mike Ramsey, and I saw him today. He helped us at the food bank. He is one of the kindest men that I know. And if I had to tell you why, and I, I he won't be watching this, so um, I can talk about him. If I had to tell you why, I don't even know what I'd say. He doesn't, maybe he does random acts of kindness. I don't know, but he's kind, he's caring, he's considerate. Um, I've known him for about 20 years, I guess, or more, and I've always felt that way. If I think about Mike, I think about he's one of the kindest people I know. So what makes these people kind? If I was to ask you to name some of the kindest people that you know, what makes them kind? Are they just great people? They're just good people. They were birthed that way. And I don't know. 
maybe that's partly true. Some people are just nicer than others, but I think bigger than that, it's Jesus in them. Both of the ones that I mentioned are serious about their faith and they love and their love for Jesus. They love Jesus and it just uh, bubbles out of them and they allow Christ's kindness to manifest to others in their world. Um, I want to be like that and I'm not. I want to be someone who just bubbles forth with kindness, don't you? You know, as I was reading different things about kindness today and just kind of uh, pondering it, I came upon this weird article that listed the top seven kindest people in the Bible. Again, this is their take, their opinion, and it's kind of weird, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Some people I would have chose to be on that list and others I wouldn't have. But who would you put on that list? If you had to think of your top 10, top five of people in the Bible who were the kindest people by reading about them, who would you put? Well, obviously, and hopefully, you all would put Jesus as your number one, which this person did. Their number one person uh, was Jesus to look at. Very kind. Okay, but then they go on. Their number two was someone who I also would have put number two, the Good Samaritan. Very kind in the things that he did. Uh, Very, very kind. The third person they put was the woman who washed Jesus' feet with her hair in Luke 7, 36 uh, through 52. I thought that was interesting. I don't think I would have thought of her, but they talk about her kindness. The next one was Boaz and Ruth, and you can read their story in the book of Ruth, but how kind they both were. Uh, The fifth was Joseph. Uh, I think he kind of left a led a tragic life. I mean, a lot of tragedies happened to him, but God just always showed him favor and he just continued to be obedient to the Lord. And then in the end, he ends up, you know, forgiving his whole family and taking care of them. So he's a very kind man. The sixth was Pharaoh's daughter. Um, She knew more than, you know, the one that Moses came down the Nile in the little basket and she saw him and took him. She knew the order was to kill all the babies. I mean, it was her father that made that order, yet she saved that child and raised him as her own. And it was a very amazing act of kindness. So they put her. I don't think I would have thought of her either. And then the seventh, they put Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. Uh, They were the ones who went and asked for Jesus' body. They wanted to... uh, prepare it for burial they wanted to bury him like a king you know and they pretty much risked everything to do that their family their reputation and everything and um, again an interesting pick I don't know if I would have picked them so uh, just for your homework who would you say are some of the kindest people in scripture now as I meditated on that I think that I also would have included Tabitha Uh, Also, her name uh, can be translated Dorcas in Acts chapter 9, verse 36. And this is what it says about her. At Joppa, I love Joppa. We're there. It's the first place we go when we land in Israel. And I love to think about the story of Tabitha when we were there. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But she became sick and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And since Lida was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went with them, and when he got there, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows stood by him, and they were weeping, showing him the tunics and all the garments which Dorcas had made when she was with them. She had done all these things for the widows there in that community. And Peter knelt and prayed for her and she was made alive. And the story goes on. Great story. I love it. I love it. But I I love that again it was in Joppa. I love that she gets to be raised from the dead. But I love her the description of her full of good works and charitable deeds charitable, love deeds, full of kindness. She was, in some translations, call them kind. A kind lady. She probably, if she was born right now, would have been, oh, my mask blue. She probably would have been making masks like everybody's doing for all the widows of Joppa. I can picture there with her needle and thread sewing masks for all the widows in Joppa. So I think about that and think about kindness and And I have some questions for you or maybe a challenge or maybe some homework 
just for something to think about as you ponder and meditate on kindness today. Number one, think about who do you see as a kind person who first comes in your mind and why? Why? The next one, how has a kindness that's been shown to you affected your life? Some extreme kindnesses that people have shown me have really, truly affected my life. And what about you? How has a kindness affected your life? And how have you affected someone else's life by being kind or showing them kindness? The next question is kind of a challenge. Are you a kind person? Do you typically show kindness towards those you, towards those you meet? in how you speak to them, in how you respond to them, in how you relate to them, and how you love them. And then a, a, another question too, do you show partiality in who you show kindness to? Maybe your friends think you are the kindest person ever, quick to bring the meal, quick to babysit their kids, quick to blah, 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 whatever it is, your friends think you're the kindest person that they know. But what about your neighbors? Or what about your community? Or what about to someone who's different than you? Are you a kind person? I don't know. That's a hard question to think about. Let's meditate on that kindness today. Meditate on God's kindness and how he shows us kindness and be thankful for that. And then reflect on the kindness that we show others, as Paul tells us, to be kind to one another. Um, does your kindness abound? Is my kindness abounding to others? Are you generous with your kindness? During the pandemic, are you showing corona kindness? Are you showing kindness during your uprise? Are you showing kindness even when you're speaking up for others or engaging in some of the protests that are happening now against racism? Those are valid things to speak up for, but we can do it with kindness. So. Uh, are you kind during whatever and whenever? And so I challenge you to think on that and um, ask God to show you. And let's be real and honest with each other and with ourselves and ask God to change us and transform us to be more like his son. Amen. Father, I thank you for your loving kindness that you show towards us. Lord, I thank you that your kindness is marvelous and abundant, and it's something that we can't even fathom. But God, as we then look at us, do we reflect that in our relationships to others? Do we reflect that in this world that we live in? Uh, are we kind and tender-hearted? Are we warm? Are we considerate? Are we friendly? Are we generous? Do we pick and choose who we will show kindness to? Are we all about random acts and kindness rather than just being kind human beings? Lord, teach us how to do that. Again, transform us into the image of your son. We want to reflect you rightly. We want to show the world who you are. We want to love how you love. We want to uh, be compassionate as you are compassionate. We want to see through your eyes. Lord, teach us to be kind in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, ladies. I love you and go be kind. Bye.